Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to talk about how to obtain the closed loop frequency response of DC-DC converters using QSPICE. So in this video we will see first the introduction and then we will see how to obtain the loop gain of a closed loop DC-DC converter using QSPICE in two ways. One is using the dot body statement and the other way is by using the dot .fra statement, the frequency response analysis statement. Along the video we will be showing several QSPICE simulations. These are two relevant videos on this topic. This one, LTS SPICE number 7. In this video we saw how to obtain the closed loop frequency response of a DC-DC converter. And in this video today we will be using the same DC-DC converter, a back converter operating in closed loop. And in this video, QSPA is number 4, we saw how to use the frequency response analysis of QSPIs to obtain the different transfer functions of DC-DC converters operating in open loop. So, if you are not familiar with these topics, it's very interesting for you to watch these videos previously to the video today. Just a quick review of what we are going to do in this previous video, LT Spice number 7, we presented our DC disk converter, is a back converter operating in closed loop. We are measuring the output voltage. We have here our PI compensator. This is the comparator to generate the PWM signal for the switch uh, by comparing the output of the compensator with the with a ramp of 10 volts peak to peak. This is the expression of the compensator. This is the response of the compensator and so on. Then in the video we presented the block diagram, the small signal block diagram of the converter operating in closed loop with the compensator, the response of the PWM modulator, the response of the converter, the sensor and so on. And from this we explained how to do the design of the compensator. Here is the response of the compensator in blue. And in green, we have the response of the loop gain of the converter in closed loop, which is the product of all the blocks that we have in the loop, as we know. So at the end, we calculated the values of the parameters of our compensator, as shown here, and we get this response in green for the loop gain. So if the response crosses 0 dB at approximately this frequency of 7.1 kHz. So this is the bandwidth of our converter operating in closed loop. This is the response at the end that we are expecting for the loop gain of our converter. And we want to verify this response by doing a computer simulation. And here we have a more detailed representation of the loop game using WinPython. This is the response, the control to output transfer function response of the converter. This is the response of the compensator, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the ramp, the sensor. So this is the transfer function corresponding to the loop game of our converter. And here we are plotting this. If you are not familiar with this program, please take a look at this video with Python number 3. And here we have the representation. This is the magnitude of the loop game. And here we have the phase of the loop game. So we can see that the crossing uh, through 0 dB is approximately at 7 kHz, we have to take into account that in the asymptotic representation that we have seen in previous slide, the point corresponds in reality to the minus 3 dB point of the magnitude. And here we have approximately 7 kHz, as we can see. But in reality, the point crossing 0 dB is approximately between 5 and 6 kHz. And here we have the phase, so we can see also here the effect of the zero, which is produced by the ESR resistance of the capacitor. 
So here we have some points, and this is what we expect to obtain at the end by doing our analysis based on computer simulation. This is how we did the measurement of the loop game in this previous video, LTS Paris number 7. We add this voltage source into the loop with the perturbation and then from the ratio between this signal here at the output and this other signal that we have called the input then we can obtain the magnitude of the loop game and also the phase of the loop game if you are not familiar with this please take a look at this video and here we can see the result of the simulation in LTSPICE. So in solid line, we have the magnitude of the loop game. And in the discontinuous line, we have the phase. So we can see that is very similar to the expected response here at the point of minus 3 dB. We have a frequency of 6.75 kHz. And also we can see in this part here the effect of the ESR of the capacitor, the zero that is produced by this series resistance of the capacitor. Now let's see how to do this using QSPICE. So if we go to the help of the program, we can find this information related to the frequency response analysis. We have to use the dot body statement and we have here the different parameters for this statement. First, the source. This is the name of the perturbing voltage source that we are going to insert in the loop. T settle is the time required for the circuit to settle to a steady state operation. F start is the lowest frequency to do the analysis. F stop is the highest frequency again to do the analysis. And amp is the minimum amplitude of the perturbing source. This is important. Here we have this note. It says that usually it is good to increase the perturbing source amplitude at lower frequencies and at higher frequencies to get a better representation of the response. And we have several parameters to change the amplitude of the perturbing source during the analysis. But in this case, we are going to keep the perturbing amplitude constant. So it's very important in this case that we use this statement here. We set this option, body amp frec equal to zero. So the perturbing amplitude is going to be constant. If we had some issue obtaining the body response, then we can investigate these other possibilities to change the amplitude during the simulation but today we are going to focus on a constant amplitude during the complete simulation. Here we have the converter, the back converter, we are measuring the output voltage and then we have the PI compensator, the PWM modulator. This is the ramp with this definition here. And then we are adding this voltage source into the loop. So we can introduce the perturbation. And then we are using the dot body statement. This is the voltage source, the perturbing voltage source. This is the time at which we know that we are getting steady state, 0.5 milliseconds. We are doing the analysis from 1 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz and the amplitude of the perturbing signal is 1 volt. And then we are selecting this parameter so the perturbing signal is going to be constant during the whole simulation. So at all the frequencies we are going to have an amplitude of 1 volt. Even we can add here this statement to do measurements to get the crossover frequency, which is the frequency at which the open loop gain is equal to 1, so 0 dB. And then we can also calculate the phase margin by measuring the phase of the open loop gain at this frequency. So now we can run the simulation and see the results. This is going to take some time, so I will cut here and then show you the final results. Now here we have the results 
On the right, we can see the open loop gain as a function of the frequency. In solid line, we have the magnitude. And in the discontinuous line, we have the phase. So we can see even here the uh, effect of the zero of the series resistance of the capacitor. So we can do the measurement using a cursor. And then maybe we can check for the zero dBs. And then we can see that the frequency at zero dB is 5.31 kHz. So it's the same as the value that we are getting here. This is the frequency at which we are getting zero dB. And this is the phase margin, which is the phase at this point, approximately 53-54 degrees. But here there is a detail because actually what we are measuring here is not exactly the loop gain as we have defined it in our theoretical analysis. Here the program what is measuring is the same loop gain as we measure when we do the test, the measurement of the loop gain using an impedance analyzer at the laboratory in which we are not getting rid of the minus one that we have in the loop. So this is the reason why we can measure the phase margin directly by measuring the phase that we have at zero dBs. So if we want to represent the loop gain as we have done in the theoretical analysis, what we can do is to go to the results and instead of representing here the loop gain, we can do a trick which is to multiply this by the following is the x of square root of minus 1 times pi. So with this we are adding 180 degrees to the phase without modifying the magnitude of the loop gain. So we can see the result and we can compare this with the uh, theoretical response. So now we can see that if we go for example to 1 kilohertz which is this point here, we are getting a phase of minus 98 degrees, which is something similar to this point here. And we can see that other points are following the same response as we have studied theoretically. Also, remember that the point that we calculated was not the frequency corresponding to the exactly zero dBs, but the frequency corresponding to minus 3 dBs. So this is the value that we were getting, something like 7 kilohertz, very similar to the theoretical value that we got when designing the compensator. The other way that we have to do this type of analysis is to use directly the frequency response analysis that we saw in previous video. So what we are doing here is to add this uh, sinusoidal voltage source with the perturbation. The amplitude is 1 volt again and the frequency is going to be variable and this is the instant from which we are going to generate the signal. So this is the instant at which we expect to get steady state operation. So here we have the different statements. This is the definition of this instant, T0. Then we are doing a step analysis. Uh, we are changing the frequency from 1 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz, 10 points per decade. We are doing transient analysis up to T0 plus three times the period of the perturbing signal. And then we are going to do a post processing to calculate the gain by doing the frequency response analysis of the input voltage. The output voltage in this case is out one and from the instant T0 plus one perturbing period. This is to be sure that we are well in steady state 
because we can have a small transient when we introduce the perturbation at this instant. We can see this even in the waveforms that we can represent from the simulation. Note that we are using here out one because we are using this voltage source, this behavioral voltage source, to correct the minus one sign that we have in the loop. So in this way, we are multiplying V out here by minus one. So in this signal, we are getting rid of this minus one gain that we have in the loop, and therefore the phase is going to be corrected directly in the results. So now we can run the simulation and the good thing of doing the analysis in this way is that we have full control of what is happening during the simulation. For example, we can measure the output voltage and see the uh, perturbing signals. We can also measure the input voltage here. Uh, we can add another window and see the signals into windows. The only issue that we have here is that we cannot change the amplitude during the simulation. We have to use constant amplitude during the complete simulation at all frequencies, the same amplitude. But on the other hand, we can have more control of what is happening during the analysis. So this is another way to do this type of analysis. And the important point of knowing how to do this type of analysis is that we can use it not only to obtain the loop gain of a closed loop converter, but also to do any other analysis to obtain other transfer functions as the input impedance or output impedance, audio susceptibility or any other kind of frequency analysis. So this is going to take some time. So again, I will cut here and then I will show you the final results. And here we have the results of the simulation. The total simulation time is 570 seconds. We can see here the output voltage with the perturbing signals on it and also the input voltage, the voltage at this point that we need to get the loop gain. On the post-process window, we can see the results of the measurement and then now we can do the plotting and here we have the results of the loop gain, the magnitude of the loop gain and the phase of the loop gain. So we can again use the cursor and measure the point of zero dBs. So we get approximately the same value as using the dot body statement is 5.4 kilohertz but if we go to the point of minus 3 dBs, we get something like 7 kHz, as expected. Now note that the value of the phase, for example here at 0 dBs, is minus 127 degrees. So now in order to calculate the phase margin, the phase margin is the difference between minus 180 degrees and this value here, the phase at this point, and we get something like 53 degrees of phase margin, similar to the value that we get with the body statement. So now we have corrected the minus one gain that we have in the loop, so the uh, loop gain, the magnitude, and the, also the phase are as we have calculated in the theoretical response. Well, with this we get to the end of this presentation today. I hope that you find this video useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.